It, yeah. So instead of making electric vehicles, let's make vehicles that are electric. That's my that's my solution yeah. to the issue. Oh man! There you oh, go. Look, look at that. Hey man, man package that up. Make make a shirt out of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome to Break Check. I'm Craig, and Brian is not with us today, but he is with us in spirit because we pre-recorded this special bonus episode with GT Garage Talk, Matt and Corey, and myself and Brian, and that's what we have coming up next. We uh, recently had a chance to join them at Texas Auto Riders Roundup that has uh, that had several manufacturers, and we got a chance to drive a bunch of cars on track, on the streets. And we just we really hit off those guys, had a lot of fun with them. We think you'll enjoy them as well. So we thought it was only natural to kind of share our thoughts on that event. And that's what we have coming up after this. So please stay tuned for that and uh, hope you enjoy. All right. So I want to kick us off. I wore my Hellcat hat. I wore <laughs> the only other piece of Dodge, anything that I own at the moment. I, I do plan on <laughs> rectifying that. I want to say... Um, as as a previous non-believer in Hellcat, <laughs> all the things I am converted. Um, Thank I, goodness. It, it yeah. Uh, well, I, I think I boiled it down to this: if you're bored of Hellcats, it's because you've never driven one. It it was <laughs> incredible, absolutely incredible. I, I just want to say I told you so. <laughs> I, I, I'm loving uh, just being on this side of uh, vindication <laughs> of. I just puffed my chest out just a little bit more. Uh, that I told you so. I even so, got my Dodge uh, cup. Yeah. Look at oh, that. wow. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're literally drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> That's where you're at. That's it. I, I do want to say that, um, yes, Corey, you're on the right side of being right on this one. And also, uh, this is a lesson to all of us that, that sometimes when everyone talks about it being so great, it might be great. Yeah. So, <laughs> There is a reason the reputation is there. There is a reason why a company as large as now Stellantis is sinking so much money into this platform and putting it essentially in all the vehicles of a single brand. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things we talked about uh, that day was, and that's really neat, is first off, they had the cojones to do it. Thank right. you, Dodge, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, totally. But secondly, the amazing thing to me, because – I know about I don't know about y'all, but we ha we experienced this with the Shelby GT350 a little bit. We get nervous about some of these engines that have so much horsepower and that are a little different. But they seem to have figured this one out. This it just works, and it right. actually seems to be yeah. fairly reliable for what it is. Considering it's that's the most unbelievable part to me. Yeah, uh, just so our first lap around the track at the Texas Auto Riders. 2021 auto roundup was with moses smith of moses smith racing in the mm -hmm. hellcat red eye charger so 797 horsepower and you know he was going through he's not employed by dodge he was there <laughs> on their behalf but he was talking about just how easy they made his job at instructing us uh, on going around the track because it wasn't just throw 800 horsepower at it and let her rip like there, there was way more to it than that. And it was evident if you tracked it, it was evident if you were, even if you took it out on the road, because we noted just how civilized it was until you dipped in the throttle just a little bit. And you heard that rumble and that banshee scream from under the hood. And you knew that you were in something special at that point. Yeah, it's definitely something special. And, you know, I started out First thing I said to Craig, what do you want to do first? And we kind of looked at each other and I said, look, let's get on the track. Let's get our blood flowing. Mm -hmm. And then because we walked in with an agenda to film, you know, the world. And it's like, OK, at some point, <laughs> let's enjoy this a little bit, too. Let's get out of the way. And so I started out in that exact Hellcat you're talking about. And um, let me tell you, cold brakes and cold tires uh, gave me a, a slightly different impression. <laughs> than it was just that moment. Um, it was a ton of fun. I'm used to Lucy cars like that. And it was such a blast. And like you said, that Banshee well, just mm -hmm. whatever panel gap problem you may have had with FCA <laughs> in the past, right. it just didn't matter, nope. right? Like you just go, yeah, but 800 horsepower, right? And just, <laughs> the just, ultimate trump card. Matters anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you needed nothing else. So Matt actually had a solution for the Colt tires thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he lit, <laughs> yes. Warm those right up. <laughs> he lit them all up uh, <laughs> right off the bat. And 
we're still not entirely sure if that's how it was supposed to go because when it came to my turn <laughs> to lap it, uh, Moses was quick to point out that it had launch control and all these very nifty electronic uh, nannies to keep you from uh, completely filling the cabin and surrounding area with tire smoke. So thank you for ruining yeah. my fun, Matt. But You're it was <laughs> absolutely it was fun to well, capture. Uh, well. Matt, Matt, don't feel too bad because I had the exact same problem in one of the Lexus vehicles. Oh. So what's funny is uh, Brian and I get home from the Auto Rider Roundup and we're talking about, we're telling our wives, you know, what was your favorite car? What did you have fun in? And and we both uh, admitted to, well, we lit up tires in two Lexuses. <laughs> so <laughs> as crazy as that may sound with the Hellcats there. but So I get the RCF Fuji Speedway Edition. Fuji! And I yeah. And I, yeah, and I get in there with, I uh, can't remember the guy's name now, Brian will remember for me. Chad. Chad. That's Chad from it. Lexus University or Lexus College, I can't remember which yeah. one it was. Yeah, uh, pretty good job. Uh, so I get in there, and he's <laughs> telling me exactly how to do launch controls. Oh, it's, it's super simple. There's a button here. It actually says launch control. You just hit the button, <laughs> push the pedal all the way down with your left foot, push the pedal all the way down with your right foot, and just let go of the brake when you're ready. Okay, cool. But he didn't. Mate, or he probably did. I just didn't hear it. I was just too excited. <laughs> you got to really mash down that brake pedal. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing I know, I'm about halfway into a really, really good burnout. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to own it. I'm just going to roll it out a little bit further and then just Shoot. go. Absolutely. And, uh, it, it was a blast. And he, of course, Chad was really good about it. He's like, well, that's not exactly how you would have done it. But yeah, it's okay. It was fun. So. <laughs> So, so I want to add to this bit of the story because I have a different perspective to what happened right there. Um, I was in queue behind you. I was in the Supra, and I had Greg from Toyota riding with me, shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> and he had just told everyone that morning, drive it like it's yours, enjoy yourself, get on track. And I look up, and I see a Fuji wing. All I can see is because there's a K-Rail between us. is a Fuji wing and a plume of smoke. And I was like, man. That sure looks like a Hellcat, but it definitely sounds like a Lexus. And I looked over at Greg, and Greg just blatantly ignored it as if it did not happen. And uh, I, I muttered something like, well, you know, I guess drive it like it's yours. And he goes like, he must not pay for his tires. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. Uh, God bless him for being a good sport. Yes. That's yeah, awesome. a lot of fun. I, okay, so I, will, I don't want to be the uh, negative Nancy in the room, but I will say – as fun as the Hellcat was, mm -hmm. I, out of those three, out of the three they had there, the Hellcat, the Challenger Scat Pack, and the Durango Hellcat, mm -hmm. the, to me, the Scat Pack uh, was mm -hmm. my favorite, other than the name, because it shouldn't be, that's really weird, the feces, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's a poopy name. Other yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, other than that, if you can believe this is in the same sentence, that is the Miata of the group. Agreed. The Challenger totally. is the Miata of the group. Yeah. Because it. It made usable power. The Hellcat was so fun and raucous and just crazy, like in a like a bar fight, you know. So it's, it yeah, it's just, a bar brawl. Yeah, it's it, a ton of fun. You just you barely breathe on the pedal, and it's just you it's know, like a gut the, punch. But the Challenger, <laughs> you could put the pedal down, and it just went, and yeah. uh, and it had the brakes and the handling to go along with it. So I don't know. I had a little more fun with that, and I like the idea of getting that in a manual. Yeah. So yeah. that's Save pretty intriguing manuals. to me. I like. Save the manuals. There you, you go. See? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Hey, where can you get that shirt at? <laughs> GTGarageTalk.com. Hook you right there you up. Go. On yeah. uh, so, you know, on, on your point, Craig, I'll, I'll agree because the Hellcat is what I want Friday and Saturday night. And I wanted to come with about a cement or a, a semi truck full of tires. Yeah. And right. if that was a package deal, I'd be all about it. But to actually spend money on and buy and actually drive every day, Scat Pack, silly name, great car, um, really hit the sweet spot for me. And, and I, honestly, out of all the cars I drove that morning, now it might be because this one was warmed up. All the others that were cold that I drove. Um, it seemed to be more balanced than any of them. Um, keep in mind, the Lexus Fuji Track Edition was phenomenal as well, but it was mm -hmm. stone cold, and the tires just weren't awake yet. So that's not a fair assessment, but I was, I was really impressed with it in that environment and uh, really think the manual aspect is appealing too. Now, it's hard to turn on a Hellcat. I'm not saying that Hellcats, <laughs> right, the Hellcats, yeah. but the Scat Pack was really impressive, uh, more than I thought it would be. I'm saying so yeah. I've I've listened to as many episodes of your podcast as I can with my crazy uh, multiple uh, jobs multiple hats that I wear in my life but one thing that <laughs> you're I, a glutton for punishment I, 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 <laughs> one thing that y'all do that I really like is y'all talk about 
uh, after y'all get a rig, how often you're online checking that one out and configuring it for yourself. <laughs> and I kid you not, I've gotten at least two different screenshots from Matt about that scat pack. Uh, he, <laughs> okay. he's, he's dreaming right, pretty okay, big there. there <laughs> I, I, I will say, um, so we drove the Hellcat Red Eye Charger. We drove the Durango. We drove the Supra, the Fuji, um, the IS 350, yeah. um, all on the, on the track. And my favorite for the entire weekend, and I'm a you know unbiased journalist. I'm not supposed to say this, but um, my favorite car, the car I would have taken home that weekend, was the 392 wide body scat pack I, interesting I, of wow. of all those vehicles uh, the the supra was incredible it didn't matter how fast you put it in the corner it stuck it just yeah like the front was glued to the ground it mm -hmm. would not mm -hmm. push the nose at all um but there was something distinctly special about that 392 that it that, just that was ugh. like the buzzword of the entire time we were driving that car around was everything was just special about it down to the gauges uh, special retro mm. flare to the gauges even the uh you noted even the uh blinker noise in the cabin was different than the other two dodge products mm. that were there it had a more retro nostalgic click to it it mm -hmm. it, it was special it was different it was not just your average car in the sense that it wasn't just a 800 horsepower engine stuffed under the under the hood i think you're completely right on that and it's it's funny i want to talk about the super real quick too because i took that out and mm -hmm. it's funny that you had it sticking like glue i had a little bit of push and again cold tires and i went out in the scat pack and i had a fair amount of oversteer which was <laughs> hysterical and i, I want to comment on um fca mopar Stellantis, pick your name at the time um there's two things they don't they just choose not to do and one of them is put mufflers on anything with a Hemi. <laughs> and we're uh, perfectly fine with Which that. I love. That's a plus, by the way. That's a plus. Um, which is how we can afford them, right? They're saving all that money on mufflers. And then yeah. two, their stability control and traction control is kind of there, kind of not, which is a great thing. I love it. It's the only car we took on track with stability on. It was, well, the Hellcat excluded. The Hellcat just overpowers stability control. Yeah. But the Scat Pack was a balanced car that you could actually walk it out and it didn't completely shut you down. Mm. Um, whereas some of the other products would, before you even got three degrees of, of y'all, it was it was locking it down, cutting power. So, again, really enjoyable. Matt, get one. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, or maybe we can split one. Maybe we can split it between everyone. Right. Here. We'll, we'll, everyone takes a week. Uh, I'm, I'm down with it. <laughs> I'm down for that, most definitely. <laughs> okay, so that's a great uh, uh Thing there, Matt. What, what you've been searching, uh, Corey, Brian. What are some? What are the cars you've been searching since you've left? Because that's the true test. Brian, oh, Corey, uh, go. I gotta hear this. Okay, so I've been asked multiple times, "What is your favorite car that you drove?" Because I think we had somewhere around eighteen on our tally. Which, given that many and the amount of time that we had, we didn't really get to spend a lot of time with any of them. So. It, more surface level impressions, you know, speed dating kind of thing. And it, it's a difficult question to ask because there was such a wide breadth of vehicles there because the vehicle that I would want to drive home and I'm purely talking about the two hour drive home and not, you know, <laughs> drive home to keep or drive home to, you know, hoon around at home with uh, was the Genesis GV80. I absolutely mm. loved that vehicle and i was cruising around with uh the sounds of nature listening to the ocean waves pre <laughs> preparing myself for mexico i had the massage seat going I, it, it was just a lovely I massage seat brian I told you. <laughs> hang, hang on hang on i gotta ask you guys a question did you find the massage seat on the passenger side i did not because i don't either because there isn't one yeah <laughs> but you're driving. Was, it doesn't matter yeah you don't need don't that totally <laughs> so well, now i know how tiger crashed he was playing with his, his seat i guess but <laughs> I, 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 well and it had pelvic massaging it was really <laughs> i was a little scared to go home and tell my wife about it so. right <laughs> I, I think you apologize to your wife on film for when the review comes out he said sorry <laughs> about the pelvic massage joke <laughs> well in fact, you got on to me because you said we cannot put that in the in the video. So quit talking about it. <laughs> 
so I'll sneak it in now, but... podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do. So that was like my if, if I had to have something every day. But when it comes to just all out craziness, for some reason, like the vehicle that checked all the boxes for me uh, is still the one that sold out and that you have no chance of getting brand new. And that is the 2021 Durango Hellcat, just because uh, yeah. I've driven that one twice now. I've tested out launch control on private streets and on the track. And every time I, I, I put it pedal to the metal on that thing with launch control enabled, it, it just, like I said earlier, it was a gut punch and you could hear all four tires screeching and scratching for traction. And it, it's just insane what they were able to do with that thing. And we don't have any tracks around here. So, you know, corners they don't matter you know right uh to your point on a previous podcast episode it's a texas sports car it it, yeah. it goes fast in a straight line and that's all that really matters when you've got <laughs> uh, hours of open road ahead of you so uh that would be perfect for uh acting a fool in and uh loading the kid up in the back <laughs> and going on a road trip across texas so that one checked a lot of boxes for me yeah I i'll say that's the one as soon as i got home my wife goes well how was my new car Referring to the Durango Health. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I wish. But uh, yeah, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. But well, yeah. I don't think, to, that, to Cora's point, you can't even get one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting because I still see press loaners going out to people to review them for the first time. And it's, <laughs> it's all brand perception at this point. It's all the yeah. Hellcat, all the things that they're going after because, yeah, nobody's getting them if they haven't already got their name on the list. Right. Yeah, you know, I think that's to Dodge's point. Um, what other car company says, you know what? The world's going green. Electric electricity <laughs> is the future. When you think about our footprint, and by the way, let's just put a Hellcat in it, and then everyone says, "Look, you've got cafe standards." They go, "Don't worry, we bought all of Tesla's. So we're covered. <laughs> we bought their cafe standards, so we can keep selling these maniac cars." God bless them, man. <laughs> I think Absolutely. I've said it for years, Dodge does cool better than anyone. Yeah, and, you and know they'll do it. At the sacrifice of anything to make sure it's still cool. <laughs> you know, there's a great ad, and they've had the, some great marketing. You got you got to give Mopar sure. for their marketing. There was a great ad a few years ago when the Charger came out, and it's basically it's it storms past a bunch of other cars that look boring, and it goes through this tunnel, and you see that that beautiful the tail lights, you know, that LED tail lights outline of the Charger, and it and it basically the tagline is just uh, Dodge, leader of the human resistance. <laughs> and it just, I love that, especially in this age. It's still going on, especially in this age of ID fours, which I'm sure Matt was second. That was Matt's second favorite car was ID four. I'm sure. <laughs> um, and and we'll t we can talk about that more later. But yeah, it's it's so much fun. I love what they're doing. It's funny to me that the Charger encapsulates two things: one, the Hellcat, mm -hmm. right, which we know what that stands for. It also stands for a law enforcement vehicle in many places. Mm. So when you see that tail light, you don't know if you're going to erase the guy or just <laughs> lock your cruise at 65 and take it easy. It's right? hysterical. <laughs> so Brian, what was your favorite leaving there? What, it, what have um, you been Googling and building and pricing? I hate to admit a few things here. Um, um, look, if you don't mention I, one of them, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> I, I don't know. Here, here's the deal. I love burnouts. Mm -hmm. It's my happy place. I've mm -hmm. been doing it for years. I've kept stacks of tires in my garage on purpose. Um, I've kind of gotten away from that recently. I still miss it. So the Hellcat was like an obvious choice to me. We both took out the Hellcat and the LC500 at the same time and yeah. swapped on the route and came back. And um, I've got to say, that really impressed me. It was such a nice place to spend time in. Mm. And I've been, I've been looking at cars.com there for that more than anything else lately. Um, on, in the used side of things. I was going to say, um, uh, that that's quite a uh, champagne budget you got there. <laughs> oh, look, I'm on a Michelob at best budget over here, so it's not going to happen. But, but it's nice to know that they're coming down a little bit. I was, I was, you know, it's my first time driving that car, so I was really impressed with it. And I was impressed with Lexus in general. And Craig brought this up a lot that, you know, uh, if you didn't know better, you wouldn't think of Lexus as an enthusiast brand. You would think of them as the ES300 and 350, mm -hmm. the RX whatever of yesteryear and that's just not what you have in mind and yeah. that day it was like wait a minute who are these people mm. where have they been keep doing your work i'm excited about this um yeah so that, that was a high one for me as well uh after that and the mopar family i still like the scat pack but i'll admit i've been looking at used hellcats 
routinely for about six or seven months now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, to your point about Lexus, so on our previous week's episode, we interviewed the VP of events for the Texas Auto Riders, Tia Collier, and mm -hmm. the thing that stuck with me from her interview, uh, which was in between the day and a half of driving that we did, was to let go of any preconceived notions before getting in a vehicle. And oh, yeah. we even drove the vehicle that she referenced on day two for us. Uh, she did not call it out by name. I will not call it out by name because I don't want to call her out on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, totally unassuming. But getting in it, 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 you know, it was a every day. It was a commuter. It, it was nothing, you know, Hellcat powered or anything like that. But just to lay any preconceived notions at the door, just get in it and drive. And so the entire ha second day that we were there, the half day that we were there, that was the attitude that I was getting into vehicles is like, all right, check anything I thought at the door and let's just, let's just drive. And I've been trying to apply that to more and more stuff for my life because I realize how much I'm doing it. <laughs> and so yeah. uh, it, it was refreshing to get out there the second day and experience maybe a different side that I was closing my mind off to before. That's really good advice uh, from Tia and, and if we've come across this realization in the last few months as well, um, that we'll walk into a review and we'll have this expectation bar at a certain place and the car lands somewhere else. Right. And not that that's a problem, but it lands that way. And then we're either excited more than we should be or upset more than we maybe should be. Um, maybe we're equally upset. Like we should be on certain cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, <was> three. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Brian's the one that gets upset, not me, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. But we call it taking your hater glasses off, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you might walk into a car and you go, you think you've got it figured out or you've got something you, you want to say about it already. Uh, the vet was like this to me. I knew it was going to be great, the C8 vet. And then I said, you know what? On the, I drove it for two miles and it, I, in my neighborhood. And I, I lit it up a few times. I went, that was good, but not great. Um, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. And then Craig took it from there for three or four days. And... Um, kept telling me all these great things. And I realized right then, okay, I've got to walk in to my stint with the car without any bias. I just need to drive it and let it talk to me and tell me how good or not good it is. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, to your point, to Tia's point, it's the best thing we can do. You know, honestly, as journalists. I think that's, uh, that's exactly the spot. Corey mentioned this before we jumped on air with you guys. That's exactly the spot that I was in on, on both sides of that coin, really, because we reviewed the, uh, the Mazda CX-30. Mm-hmm. And the Mazda three turbo mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. almost back to back. Yeah. Just about back to back. And they're essentially identical, right? The CX 30 is yeah, just a little bigger. Um, yeah. But reviewing the three, I loved it. It was great. It was fun. It was exciting. Um, and then getting in the CX 30, I didn't like it nearly as much as I liked the other car that we were reviewing against it and, uh, or comparing it to. And, and so I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm too much in my head. I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, it yeah, was it's uh, easy. It's easy to get there. Yeah. You get stuck in it. I, so Craig, I know you're itching to say something here. This, this is, <laughs> yeah, I've got it what, pulled what's up. Curious to me about the CX 30. What is the, Oh, you have the window stickers. Yeah. Okay. What's the price difference between those two, by the way, I'm curious. All right. So the Mazda three as tested 35, 415, the Mazda CX 30 as tested 35, 400. So the same, okay. $15 so the same. apart. And ironically, the Mazda wow. three was cheaper <laughs> <laughs> so, Wow. or more expensive. Sorry. Uh, so uh, the interesting part of that is that there's about $15 more steel in the springs on the CX-30. <laughs> so it's a little bit taller. Is that what that was? And there's some okay. cladding, that's... and that's it. They're the same. <laughs> yep. They're the same. And so uh, they're both right now. The CX-30, that one was also turbo and all-wheel yes. drive, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so they're really comparable. Yeah. Both of them with the 2.5-liter turbo four uh, with 227 horsepower and an astonishing 310 pound-feet of torque. I think that's, that's pretty good diesel. That's yeah. a good diesel number out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here it's starting already. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't do this because it's, it's, let me be very clear. It's a great car. Yeah. I'm going to recommend it to everyone. It really yeah. is. Um, it's just not what, again, expectations is not what I expect from Mazda. Right. And Mazda has been, and 
to my credit, which Craig never wants to bring up, <laughs> Mazda has been telling us for years that they are good driving cars. Zoom, zoom. The whole Zoom Zoom campaign. You know, Craig's bought two of them in that time period. New, brand new. Um, and every time you drove a car that was Mazda, let's say from the mid 2000s, 2000s up until just recently, they've always been the best driving in its class. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the most powerful, maybe not the most refined, but the best driving. And so the last Mazda 3 I drove was a... 2017 the previous gen right. 2017 mm-hmm. two liter the small motor with a manual and i was blown away at the whole cart and horse idea that mazda has and that you're one with the machine it just nailed it it was a slow car and every clutch input and shift lever input and tip in on a turn was it was magic it was magic in a bottle it was a slow car and i loved everything about it mm. and then i got the new one and so my expectation was already there so that this is my fault for for having the hater glasses on for not coming with open mind. <laughs> and I drove it and I said, Craig, this feels a lot like that CX-9 we just had. And um, lo and behold, it basically is. It's just shortened down yeah. uh, in terms of chassis. So what annoyed me about it was that for the same kind of money, you can get a CX-5 yeah. with the turbo and the all-wheel drive, which is a now my expectation is different because it's a crossover. A full-on crossover. I go, this drive is pretty good for a crossover. Right. Not the best thing on the planet, but pretty good. And you get into what looks like a hot hatch. Here's Craig. Craig gets mad when I say this. When I see what looks like a hot hatch, I expect it to be at least a little fun or like more engaging, more fun. Not that it was terrible, but when it feels just like its cousins, I'm kind of going, what's going on? I'm really confused by it, and it, it messes me up a little bit. But that was my take on it, and the other part was, the turbo was timed in a way and sized in a way that it's all about torque. Yeah. And the transmission wasn't quite sharp enough to make the best of it. Mm. Whereas, um, and I'll, I'll, we bring this up all the time. The Kia Seltos is a cheap, all drive, twin clutch, smaller engine, and more fun to drive. It blows my mind because that is not trying to be a hot hatch, but it's a hoot to drive. And I just, it just doesn't have any right to be that fun. Mazda's kind of abandoned that and gone to the nice car route, which it is. It's very nice and it's really compelling when you compare it to Mercedes and BMW competitors. It's it, it's a huge bargain. So I just needed to take I needed to take that perception out and walk into it thinking Mercedes and BMW. Well, what really upset us was the fact that uh, it did not have the little green track sticker on it. Uh, oh, for uh, sure. Of yeah. all the vehicles that were there, that was the one we were most upset was not trackable for that day because it is yeah. the one I think we all wanted to track the most or both of us wanted to track the most because we wanted to see what it could do. It's that whole uh, top gear, James May a vehicles fun when you reach its <laughs> limits and we weren't reaching the yeah. Hellcat's limits. We weren't reaching the Supra's limits. We weren't reaching the Fuji's no. limits or anything like that. So to find a vehicle at its purest, at its most fun uh, that is the car we figured we'd be able to do it best in, and uh, lo and behold, uh, it was street duty only for us. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. I, I have a theory why it was that way. Uh, the the brakes aren't great, and the cars gained a little bit of weight over previous mm-hmm. generations, and they wouldn't they just wouldn't last. That's why we had two lap limits. They were trying to keep brakes from from cooking, and uh, and we we even heard I'm sure y'all heard this too. Some of the cars were had fresh brakes put on overnight because they they didn't survive. Oh, the first day <laughs> i did and, see uh, a pile of brakes <laughs> yeah. so i knew something was up yeah yeah so uh we yeah so there's that um and the mazda 3 just it just it's not made for that and Mazda's very clear we're going the premium route we're going the nice route that's not where it should be to your point it would have been a blast i think the hyundai venue would have been fun too mm. minus its transmission selection it was a tossable light fun car um so that that's kind of where my head was at on it there was a lot of cars i wish could have gone on track um there's nothing better than, you know, a Rolls Royce on track. I don't know why we couldn't do that, but that's just me. <laughs> hey, we got to uh, off-road the Cullinan, so I'm just saying it, it, it would not have been the worst thing in the world that's true. to uh, track the the Rolls ghost, <laughs> but it is what it is. That was fun. So, Craig, you alluded to it. Uh, Matt is dreading it across the table from me, but I have to bring it up only because while we were at the event, it was named what World Car of the Year. And then right. coming home from the event, Tanner Faust dropped a bombshell to on us Baja. of yeah. taking the ID4 to Baja. Like, what the crap is going on in the world? What is the world right now? <laughs> 
<laughs> so first 2020, now this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I thought, 2021 was was bidding, getting better, and then Corey puts my puts me behind the wheel of the ID four. First thing, first thing. <laughs> Monday morning. First of, all, that, first of all, that's a bad friend. Friend, you just oh. shouldn't do that. To <laughs> I, I I made up for it because the next rig we got in was the Hellcat Red Eye. But uh, <laughs> okay, okay, it, you instant saved redemption. I, 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 like a part of me felt broken, and I had to put it back together with some. <laughs> Gasoline and troop supercharger Whoa. wine or something, you know. No, I so I think I have whittled down after um, stewing on it for a week now. My issue with the ID four, and probably although it's the only example of all electric vehicles that I've driven outside of a golf cart, um, it's probably <laughs> going to be. Different, by the way, uh, it's really not. Yeah. Uh, but it's probably not going to be much different across the board because it is this. They're trying so hard to make something different mm. when mm. the way that it's going to sell is if it drives like a car. And mm. it doesn't drive like a car. It drives like an EV. Mm-hmm. Man, can, can I just jump in real quick? Yeah. I want to I bounce off of that. So I hate to break it to you, uh, but of the two full EVs we've reviewed, that one drove more car-like than the others so and that's their whole marketing ploy behind it too totally yeah and you can tell in the styling too right they didn't make it look totally stupid it looks like a bigger golf with some shape um which which is good like it's hard to disagree with the golf it's pretty straightforward right yeah um wait a minute Brian. you think the id4 drove more like a car than the mach-e yeah i do i think it was a little more the throttle tip-in tuning was less jerky Mm -hmm. and i think Mm -hmm. the learning curve is going to be less for someone like our mom she would get in it and See, just go. I would, I would disagree here and just have to call Brian okay. out and just tell him he's wrong because <laughs> the Mach E drove to me more like a car, felt more like a car, it was more substantial, felt like a car. The ID4 I got out of, the ID4 I got out of, and I literally felt like what Matt said, it felt like a golf cart yeah. with glass. Okay, so, but I, I felt like the Mach E was a golf cart too. And in fact, I, I just couldn't yeah. get off that after driving it. And again, it's not that that's. I mean, it kind of is, right? Like, if you've ever driven a golf cart and you give it full throttle, at the bottom end, it wants to break your neck off, and then it just falls out of energy up yep. top, right? And, yep. Yep. and we talked to Blink about this and some other EV people there. They don't have gearboxes. They're going to taper off in their power curve, which is how it is. Um, they've worked really hard with the Volkswagen to make it feel, like you're saying, Matt, a normal car. They forgot to make it feel fun. And that's mm. what I'm concerned about is that there's a big, you know, a Golf GTI is a really balanced car that's a lot of fun. Not the most extreme, very livable. I don't feel that in the the ID four, and its reviews are reflecting that too. I don't think we're off base on that. Yeah. Well, except that it's World Car of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> they paid <laughs> off someone somewhere. Every right? pageant. Yeah. I, but but I, I I'm with you. Uh, I, I get I get the frustration, Matt, because the my frustration with those types of cars are like Volkswagen, like you. They make good cars. They make the Golf. They make the Jetta. They make the, the those are great cars. Yeah. And the switch gear works. Everything makes sense. It's mm-hmm. not confusing. But you get an ID four, and now all of a sudden, the same way to to adjust the mirror or the window or something that should be really simple. There aren't now rear sudden, window buttons. Like right. Wh- it's wh- a, everything's a, why? Why does it have to be so much harder? Yeah. 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 I, I don't oh, understand man. why they have to do that. Yeah. The sunscreen on the sunroof was the most bizarre thing. You have to like swipe your thumb across it to make it close or swipe it back to open. I'm going, what is happening here? Yeah. No. So they're and, just trying to be too cute. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're adding in all these extra features, these extra, you know, whiz bang whatevers to try and make it so much different, so much, you know, more modern or whatever you want to call it. And and we miss out on the driving portion of it <laughs> completely it's right yeah. It, yeah so instead of making electric vehicles let's make vehicles that are electric that's my that's my solution yeah. to the issue oh man there you oh, go. Look, look at that hey man right. package that up. make make a shirt out of that please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get on it as soon as i get back from mexico look <laughs> there you go look in the world of teslas you can't make a car that, that it's not at least quick right and we, we both, when we mashed the pedal in the ID4, Craig actually said, no, floor us. said, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yell at hit me. Hit the play button. Come on. Right? Yeah. yeah, hit the play button. So what 
what I ruined for my sales pitch to Matt to like start leaning him towards the electric side of things, which I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. I do understand they serve a purpose moving forward, but uh, by putting sure. him in that first, uh, I stood no chance at getting him in what I should have gotten him in uh, to kind of tip him that way, which was the RAV4 Prime. Now, I have not driven one personally, yes. but Redline Reviews has one as a their permanent car, and he talks about it very lovingly. He talks about the acceleration in that uh, being totally unexpected for what it is, and uh, it was a missed opportunity for me. So, uh, it, Greg, if you want to send a Toyota RAV4 Prime over here to Tyler, Texas, we'll be more than happy <laughs> to give it a proper uh, Garage Talk review. <laughs> So, so we got a chance to, to drive that one because we were told right off the bat by Greg, hey, don't sleep on the RAV4 Prime. It's the second, fast to- second fastest Toyota. We're like, wait, what? Wait, wait, what? So, do what? No, yeah, I was with you. I was confused. Yeah, yeah. Said that. So, so we went out and we got it and we drove it. And uh, it's, it's unbelievable, Corey. You're right. You should have started Matt there and then slowly worked him up to something else. But Because that's a good gateway electric car yeah so it was um, awesome it was blowing tires off on acceleration and it just we left giggling like children and said look <laughs> it's prime time this thing is awesome <laughs> oh yeah it so, was ridiculous have y'all built and priced one since getting home it, well that's 40. ridiculous too <laughs> 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 i had to ask yeah for forty thousand fifty thousand dollars for a rav4 that's um mm, i'm not there yet so yeah. i don't think so yeah so I, it's I have, still a Rav4 inside, which is which is not a bad place, but at 50k, it's it's kind of a lot to ask. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have one question though. You said it's the second fastest Toyota there. Was the other one the Sienna? Because <laughs> the uh, I remember we there being a BMW Supra, but I don't. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. the, it was the no. Supra. Oh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we're we're not running uh, out same, of gas on that joke. The same <laughs> Supra that you love on track. That yeah. one. Yeah, yeah that one. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. the brand confused sports car, as we refer I, to it over I, here. I purposefully took a picture with my hand over the emblem of the engine just, just to have that picture. <laughs> okay. It's, well, okay. So one thing we did get to do, and Brian is really mad at me for talking to these electric vehicle people for oh, an boy, hour. Oh, boy. Here we go. But I don't think we've got the time go. for this. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm not going to give you all an hour of it. But what I will say, and the reason I did it is, is frustrating. Look, as much as the four of us, we're all gearheads and we, we want gas cars that make noise, right? It's coming. The electric world is coming. Sure. One of the things the guy said is, look, basically here's what's happened. Manufacturers have just rolled over to the government because they, it's coming. There's no sense of fighting it. Tesla pushed it. They got there first. And now all the other manufacturers are playing catch up and they got to do the same thing. And so it's just coming. Yeah. Whether or not, we, we don't want to get in a debate about if it's, is it actually better for the environment or not because... Again, we don't have an hour for that, but right. <laughs> point is, it is coming for whatever reason. I also think manufacturers have realized, and they won't admit this, but this, so this is just a Craig hot take. Uh, these views do not express the opinions of GT Garage Talk. <laughs> but what I, I really think is happening is one of the reasons they've rolled over is they're like, wait a minute, it's a lot cheaper to manufacture an electric car than yeah. it is an internal combustion car or an ice car because. There's so many more parts that you, and suppliers you have to deal oh, with yeah, with an ICE car versus an EV. And so I think that's another reason. It's just inevitable. It's coming. I don't think ICE engines will, cars will fully ever go away. It'll just be less and less percentage of them on the road. So, so why are they so, we so gotta, dead gum expensive then? If they're less to manufacture, why do they cost the, so much? It's all on that battery it's tech. The first one. It, it's yeah. the first one out. And so you think about, to your point, Matt, it's, Look, a Honda Accord has been out for a long time, and its engine is based on some predecessors, and they've amortized that cost out by a bunch of people buying Honda Accords. Yeah. The the production, you know, the the C8 syndrome of it competes with Ferrari, but they sell so many, they can amortize that cost and make it cheaper. Sure. They're just not there yet. And, and that's part of my problem, too, is that we're paying for, by an early adopter, you're paying for some of that R&D yeah. on the front end. And... Um, I'm gonna. I just want to clear the air. I'm not trying to hate on electric cars. I know it is a way forward, and I know that it's going to help the world in, in some ways. Uh, but it needs a gearbox to be fun, and that that's the real challenge. Put a yeah. manual behind it, make it entertaining, or put a good ZF8 eight speed behind it, and make that thing 
walk a Hellcat without even trying. Yeah. And just things like that make it more fun. Um, and also, before Craig gets buried in Blink Talk over here, <laughs> I want to I want to I want to go back. And I'm not trying to rag on the Blink guys; they were really informative, and they taught me a lot of things I didn't want to know, but but now I do. And they have the recovery system, Craig. I don't know if you realize this. I was working on our edit for this last night. Their recovery vehicle that would come save your electric car if it ran out of fuel, if it ran out of energy, is powered by a gas generator, yep. which is the funniest thing to me. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here and I'm going, I didn't even realize when we were talking to them. They didn't even touch on that at all. I thought it was just a giant battery back there. No, yeah. it's a gas generator. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, so, yeah, it's a gas generator. Yeah. It, it's an it ice. Goes back, it's an ice, right. And so I get back to the same problem of, while that is the direction to go, and I'm not saying we should not go that direction at all, we need to be cognizant of where the energy is coming from in general. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's just, it's, we're going to take baby steps to get there and it is going to be easier to build. It is going to be a better network. I'm excited for it. I just, I'm waiting for it to be fun. That's all. I think we would all agree here that that's what's absent from the cars we've driven so far that are electric, but it's not quite fun yet. So to that point of all agreeing on something, uh, I would like to close <laughs> us out with a segment on the dreaded, the loathsome, the uh, rubber band CBT. Uh, for those <laughs> oh, unaware, what? continuously what? Yeah. variable oh. transmission. Yes, all the terrible sound effects. Um, <laughs> so I'll be honest. Uh, I've driven a lot of things, a lot of things. And somehow I have managed to escape the dreaded CBT until this event and that's impressive i I know and i will say the vehicle that introduced me to all of the downsides of the cbt the terrible rubber bandy shift as you're trying to you know accelerate and have a little fun was a car i completely didn't expect it from and just breaks my heart that it has a CVT in it, and that is the brand new Infinity QX55. So we were oh, told. Sneak attack. I know. We were told while we were there all of the praises of the QX55. I personally think it is a gorgeous car. I fell in love with the view over the hood because all you see good. are those yeah. curves of the hood in front of you. Like it is a stunning vehicle that harkens back to the fx 35 and 45 of my high school years that i thought two then were just astonishing vehicles and then i put my foot down and (laughs) i i hope that i have got the best angle of the reaction of my face as i saw and felt what was happening in in and around us as we trudged on forward because it was the most disappointing (laughs) reaction to an otherwise very well-crafted car and you know nissan is in the process of reinventing themselves they've been sticking that nine speed in all their new vehicles and i I just Mm -hmm. took for granted that the qx55 would have a a nine speed in it and sure enough uh, we started googling it before we ever parked the degum thing and (laughs) yeah it's it's got that's heartbreaking because it was a beauty. I mean, we we unfortunately did not get to drive it. Uh, it just the time didn't work out while we were there. But it was such a good look around. I kept thinking to myself, that's going to be the answer for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be like we said earlier, the Lexus RX 350 of a couple decades ago. That's the new one. That's going to be a really good thing for a lot of people. And and I, I hate to admit it, most of those people will be fine with that transmission, which yep. is which is the problem. Yep. Um, for gearheads, but. I looked at that and thought that might be a fun thing to drive based on yeah. it's it's got some mm. it might have a little fire under its cap, might be a cool little rig, and I'm I'm really sad to hear that. Yeah, but uh it is my understanding that we all drove another disappointing <laughs> <laughs> C B T <laughs> that we can all gang up on and I, I, I don't wanna <laughs> throw too many punches their way but uh, you know in a previous episode i did mention how the nissan kicks is one of those vehicles that i'm wondering how on earth it is still in production just because it checks no boxes for me Uh, (laughs) i will say in our review comparo of it that car's not for me it was never designed for me it was never (laughs) meant to be for me and for that, I, I will give it a, a, a reprieve, a pass. But, yeah, that that was a disappointing car. 
uh, to say the least. Capped yeah, I think I think we have to go back to uh, what we talked about earlier and take the hater glasses off. And I, I ag- agreed. None of us mashed the pedal on that thing and had a smile on our face. But I do think at the end of the day, the reason it exists is because they're selling a ton of them, unfortunately, mm-hmm. like it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a reason we're not on the marketing teams or in their business <laughs> rooms, like, you know, making any decisions right. for them. <laughs> because people want a small, functional, compact, fuel-efficient, cheap car. Yeah. And that's what that is. Yep. And so did they did they hit their business points and their objectives? Yeah, unfortunately, it did for us. Um, the good news is there are a crossovers out there that are, good value that don't all have CBTs. And so there is some saving Celtos. grace, but yeah, Celtos is the one to get, but yes, um, man. Oh gosh, that was dreadful. I haven't been in a car in that long. <laughs> I have to say, okay, so we've already gotten the pass out of the way. Right. right. Um, but what happened is you mashed the pedal, a bunch of noise, a bunch of rubber band things, noise things. And, but there's no motion to, to move it forward. It's not going anywhere. Like what's happening. And as, yeah, it's quite frustrating. So, yeah, I, I I want our listeners to understand something. Um, Nissan, and, and I will call them out on this, although it's not entirely their fault. Um, Formula One actually outlawed CVTs because of how quick they were, and then they went to mass production, and people didn't know how to how to handle them. They, you know, my car's not shifting. What do I do? It's not running right. When in fact, it's putting it in the most efficient location yeah. based on vehicle speed and throttle input and all these things. Right. And so now they said, well, we'll just throw all that out the window and go back to a shifting style, except it's still CVT. So you're just moving the rubber band up and down the same. It, it's not helpful at all. So a combination of Nissan and their engineering and, and programming of that transmission and the customers who don't know what they want, uh, have now made this awful thing that is the CVT and the <laughs> Nissan vehicles. <laughs> no, no, Matt, Matt, you make a really good point. I tell Brian this all the time. Every time I get in a CVT, I remember the first one I ever got in was a Nissan Altima. It was a rental car. I went on a business trip. You know, I mashed a pedal, and I thought, what well, you're thinking, Matt. Yeah. I'd re- been reading about CVTs. I'm like, oh, great. It's going to keep me in the power band exactly where I need to be. It's continuously variable, right? It's exactly what we need. So I just go, and it starts doing these fake shifts. Yep. And I call Brian, and I go, Brian, what's wrong with the CVT? It's shifting. Why is it shifting? Because oh, it's fake. <laughs> I go, what? But why? Because people think it needs to shift. I go, that's retarded. Yeah, <laughs> that oh. that is putting the cart before the horse. That is the complete backwards yeah. way of engineering and designing things. Well, I just want to defend the CVT for just a minute, and I can't believe I'm saying this right now. But ah! Woo, I almost did a spit take. So <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Someone's got to disagree, right? So. On the kicks, while we've all kicked the kick pretty hard, um, mm. it's CVT reminds me of the first generation of CVTs that weren't very good. And those happen to be the aforementioned Altima. That's what comes to mind to me. Yeah. The first gen Rogues and Altimas, it's like, what is this? Surely this can be done better. Um, and others have swung at it and done better. And Nissan has gotten better. The, the most current Rogue is very agreeable. As a gearhead, I wasn't that annoyed with the CVT. Mm-hmm. And here's why. It was lying to me. <laughs> and yeah. it was faking gears, and I didn't get that rubber band effect. And so all the things that I complain about with the CVT, because of our preconceived notions that it needs to shift, and needs to have some kind of action happening, and not just wail and drone, for some reason, CVT, but if I just drove it normally, I wouldn't notice it, per se. And I think Subaru does the best job at this. They have their fake eight-speed CVT. Mm. And if you just drive it normally, it will shift quietly and smoothly in the background, and you will just think it's just a really smooth automatic. It's fine. Yeah, no, 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 when no, you no. ring it out, it will show its ugly face a little bit, but it's one of the betters of the CVT world if you have to do it. Uh, all that being said, please just stick with gears. They just, they just, you yeah. know, our preconceived notions aren't totally wrong. We like them. They're more fun. Yep. So, I, uh, I do want to say one more thing real quick on the CVT topic. It's I find it funny. Uh, that we've talked about how CBTs originally didn't need the shift, but then we put in fake shifts because that's yep. what people want. But then we get to electric cars, and one of our complaints is there's no shifts. Give us a shift, right? right. So right. Uh, I find it funny that we have that different balance there. 
So Well, I will get to say, and this will be the last thing on the topic, was I got to put my smug face on <laughs> as we were reviewing uh, vehicles a little bit later on in the day because, um, you know, I'm GM fanboy over here. And Matt and I took out the Mazda CX-30, which is what I drove, and he drove out the Buick Encore GX ST, and then we swapped. And, uh, you know, we didn't want to give too much away to the other one when we were swapping. And he was like, oh, you'll really like it. The transmission's really good. And that's about all he told me. And in the back <laughs> of my mind, I'm thinking, 99% sure this thing has a CVT in it. <laughs> and, you know, I start digging around, flipping through all the papers that they have in there. And, of course, you know, they've got the window stickers. And sure enough, uh, it's got a little three-cylinder engine and a CVT transmission. And I'm like... Oh, this one's going to be fun. So you'll just have to go check out our review as I, I put on my smug face and reveal to Matt that he actually fell in love with the CBT while on our media drive event. Oh, man. Was it lying to you? Was it shifting? It was. And that's the cool oh, thing. Man. So I didn't believe that it was a 1.3 liter. Um, it, it just it had way too much power for it to be that small of a motor in that thing. And I didn't believe it was a CBT. It, it shifted well. It was butter smooth. I mean... You couldn't mm -hmm. hardly feel, but I was also thinking, okay, this is a luxury minded rig. They've done some, you know, mm -hmm. finagling to make it shift well and smooth and all that. So people don't pay attention to it, but it was fairly quick and, and it was really nice. It was very well done. And, and that just goes to show that it can be done, unfortunately, and they'll keep doing it and keep selling them. But, oh, yeah. uh, the upside to CVTs that we all, so everyone wants to complain about them, right? Oh, they're rubber bandy. They're not very fun, blah, blah, blah. The upside to a CVT, and this is the only one as a driver that I do appreciate, is in stop-and-go traffic, there's nothing smoother. Yeah. There's no one-two shift jolt. You know, different companies tune share, uh, automatic transmissions differently. Some are smooth, some are not. And CVTs never have a jolt, ever. Yeah. And so if you do live in stop-and-go, eh, maybe it's the way to go. Maybe it's it's an option for you. Um, you know what's even be less in, jerky? An EV. <laughs> and on it that note, on your... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Saying dirty words again, Craig. Yes, yes. <laughs> so before we let y'all go, and uh, before we call it an evening, Matt and I do a special thing uh, with all of our guests on our podcast, and it's just to get to know the people behind uh, the rigs just a little bit more. And it's a segment Matt calls Random Misfire. So this is a fun little yes or no, either or kind of question. And because there's two of you and two of us, um, even though all vehicles should come with eight cylinders, we'll split it down the middle. <laughs> Corey will ask Craig four questions, and I'll ask Brian four questions, and uh, and that'll make our eight, and we'll we'll go from there. So we'll kind of swap back and forth. And like I said, the, Corey believes there is one wrong or, or one that you can get wrong. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I I tend to disagree with him, but uh, we'll we'll <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So, uh, Corey, do you want to start us off? Well, that's just perfect segue into the one and only question with Ugh. a wrong answer. And uh, Craig, yes, you did draw the short straw. So let's see if you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Do right, you ready. name your vehicles? Of course I do. See, he got it right. Ugh. No worries right there. Who doesn't yeah. name their vehicles? I, <laughs> crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't name your vehicle, they're just going to break down on you. Exactly. Oh, okay. All right. I, you know what? That's probably the best argument that I've heard for that so far. Yeah. 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 I'm going to steal that. Yeah, I like it. All right, Brian. Uh, we have none of us, or very few of us, have gotten to drive them yet. So this is kind of uh, a brand-biased question, but... Do you prefer uh -huh. the Wrangler or the Bronco? Of course you'd go with that. Well, question. look, that's not even fair, but definitely <laughs> Team Bronco. <laughs> Team Bronco, yes. <laughs> so that's all. Totally. That's, that's marketing so. perception at this point because the Bronco could come out and be a total piece of junk, which it probably won't. Well, <laughs> it's on, got some on. good Five bones. Words. It's got One. some burns. So no. One, that's not going to happen. Right. Two, if you've driven a Ranger, you go, well, it can only be this bad. Right. Right. And so if that's the case, okay. But no, I take your point. Craig and I debate this constantly. And I love y'all's shirts you have, by the way. Thank it was crack me up. Those are awesome. <laughs> I actually I actually had a deposit on a Bronco and pulled it last minute because of the, the production delays was just driving me nuts. 
Uh, so I guess today the answer is Jeep, and the end of summer we'll talk again. All nice. right, all right. I like it. So, you know, speaking of shirts, segue, selfish plug here, but, uh, you know, going back to one of your <laughs> podcast episodes and y- y'all ragging on uh, sequential uh, transmissions, automatic transmissions, <laughs> we, we have got a new shirt design out. Uh, I, I actually wore it to the event that says Shift Happens, and it's got the famous PRNDL on it, but it does have the uh, plus and minus, and yes, for good fun, uh, I did put them backwards. So uh, just jabbing a little Thank fun you. as we <laughs> lead you. into this very next question, which we all know the answer to, but I'm going to ask it anyway, manual or automatic? Oh, manual. Yep. Yeah. 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 Easy. You should have asked CVT or <laughs> EV. Oh. oh, boy. That's what you should have asked. I'm totally adding Ooh, that answer. one to the list. Can I, can I answer that one? Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Walking. <laughs> good answer good answer all right it is officially been added to the list moving forward cvt or ev all right brian would you rather buy a car or build a car oh man if you asked me three years ago i'd say build uh but nowadays with you know multiple jobs and multiple kids definitely buy one okay yep yep can't can't no. fault you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I've done the build. It's a blast. It just, there's just no time for it. Yeah. But I'm already one that can pull it off for sure. Absolutely. Hmm. I'm looking at the list here. There's a really good one that, you know, he could, you know, have shots fired at his brother, but I don't think he's gotten to drive the other ones. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip that one. I mean, you one. gave him a softball question <laughs> well, last I really one. Did. <laughs> I really thought, you know, it would spark a, a little fun discussion, but uh, okay. 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 Let's see here. More tech. Or less tech, Mr. Blink uh, EV. <laughs> well, okay, so I may actually surprise you with this, but I don't think I'll surprise Brian. I'm actually a less tech guy in the car. I, I, I appreciate, I love all the tech, I love the screens, I love all the gadgets, I love the lane centering thing. When it's, it's sometimes it's pretty convenient. Here's the only tech, new tech I do like, and Corey, I know you'll appreciate this. I love the mood music or whatever scenes <laughs> in a, in a that oh, is awesome. good tech because it's relaxing i like that tech all the other tech don't need it yeah i picked up a sorrento uh, and we were doing a review of it we went camping with it and to you know get in the camping mood i put it on the sounds of nature outdoor camping uh, whatever they call that one uh, yes and that that was a nice serene uh, traveling experience so it, so I put it on anytime we have one of those cars, I'll, the kids will get in and I'll, I'll put on, I think it's the rainforest or I don't know which one it is. And it, you just hear birds chirping and the kind of sounds of the forest and they just get so quiet. They calm down. <laughs> I'm like, this is amazing. It's, a, it's the there, secret sauce we've always wanted. <laughs> yeah. There's I'm, some, another way to do that too. If you put the rain one on. Your wife will have to pee immediately. <laughs> yeah. just for, so me, you know. for me, that's a given anyway. So it was just, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Holly. I love but you. Yeah, Corey, but yeah the te- most of the tech in the car is just, it really just is annoying. And I usually constantly find myself, how do I turn all this off? <laughs> Brian gets mad at me because I don't even use the auto headlights on my truck. Oh, man. And because I know when they turn the headlights on or off, I don't need it to tell me. Good yeah, man. You're, 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 Absolutely. Hang on, old man. Look, there's some conveniences that are there that are nice to feel. A little luxurious, not worry about it. But um, I'm going to hijack this question and answer it too because I just I've got something to say about it. <laughs> Bring One it thing, on. Craig likes to try the lane centering and self driving nonsense, and more than I do. And he's come around on, on me a little bit on this. But I have I'm going to stand by this. I've yet to meet a self driving system that was more competent than I am at the time. Um, and what I mean by that is there's always a scenario where look, until I can really let go of the steering wheel and just take a nap, it's not a self-driving car, right? right. It's a helper. Nice to have it. Now y'all had an Escalade for an extended period of time. What happened there? Did it not have Super Cruise? It doesn't work over 100 miles an hour. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we'll, I didn't use it. We'll just Fail. leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> but it does a good burnout. Uh, <laughs> yes, and Craig did that one too. You've done more burnouts than me lately. There's something wrong with this. Uh oh. Did that make it into the review on your YouTube? It did. All right, so go head on over, break check show, YouTube. Yep. Check that one out. Awesome. There you go. All right, favorite car movie, Brian. Oh man, that's a that's like 
picking your kids. It's just not, <laughs> it's not, it's not right. There, is, there are nine wrong, eight, wrong answers here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. you know, oh wait a minute. <laughs> I would say eight. But, uh, uh, yeah. Shots fired. <laughs> Too fast still counts. Come on. I thought we were um, friends. Uh, God, I'm going to have to go with bullet on this one. Okay. I knew it. Knew yep. it. <laughs> but number two is Ronan. Number two is Ronan. Oh, yeah, that's good. All right, so last question. What about Baby Driver? Oh, uh, that, that's... Eh. That's cool. That one I, got a lot of hype. Like, a lot of okay. hipster hype. There you go. Right. I walked okay. in with the, uh, with the pre, predisposed expectation and walked out with a little bit of disappointment. Yeah. Mm. All right, last question uh, for me to Craig. Uh, along the same vein, favorite driving song or genre? Oh, okay. <laughs> I think Brian knows Craig what I'm going to go with. But Craig doesn't understand music, so this is great. <laughs> oh. no, this is true. So, yeah, speaking of two, y'all both have worship backgrounds, it sounds like, or at least Matt does, right? Yes, is that yeah. correct? Okay, so, yeah, y'all understand sound, especially Matt, it sounds like. Um, I, I admit I will put on Sounds of Nature or a podcast more than I will any song. Okay. Um, so the correct answer, there's only one correct answer for driving music. And that's oh. GT Garage Talk Podcast. Oh, hey. good man. Oh, that is the that. most correct answer we've ever had okay. to any question ever. <laughs> I think I've won this segment. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. All right, let's see. Close us out, Matt. Close us out. For Brian. Uh, there's too many good ones on here. All right. Um, do you prefer on-road or off-road driving? Oh, man. Someone asked me this when we left the uh, the roundup the other day, and it's a really hard answer. Uh, I'm going to go on road, and the reason why is because I just love love tire smoke, and it's just harder to do that on rock. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. It does, you know. Now that we've done the spring event for Texas Auto Riders, and we've done the track day, it, it's got me salivating for some uh, off road adventures at the fall event and the Texas Truck Rodeo. And I hear it's going to be bigger, better, and better this year. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And I know Matt is because he didn't get to go last year. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to another event, another chance to get to see y'all, if not before then. So uh, it's it's a good time to be in this business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope we get to see you guys sooner. It's been a blast. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And uh, to your point, man, the truck order is going to be awesome. Looking forward to that, too, because Craig also didn't make it this yep. last time. So maybe we can all reunite there the four of us definitely yeah well hope you enjoyed that crosstalk with matt and Corey of gt garage talk if you haven't already started following them please check them out at gtgaragetalk.com they're our neighbors here in this great state of texas and we just think they're a lot of fun and definitely worth the follow so please give them a give them a shout thanks for listening see you next time